Take your Bibles, go to Isaiah chapter 21. We've had kind of a disjointed series on the great questions in the Bible. We're going to look at another one tonight. Isaiah 21. The year is 689 B.C. The world is in turmoil. Babylonian Empire is under attack by the Assyrian Empire. And many of the nations hoped that the Babylonians would defeat the Assyrian aggressors of the north. But that was not to be at this time. Babylon fell to the Assyrians. And everybody knew that Assyrians would not stop until they had conquered the entire region. And against this backdrop of war and a certain attack upon Israel, God commands his prophet Isaiah to assume the role of a watchman. He is to look into the prophetic future and tell the people what he sees coming. And that's exactly what Isaiah does. Now, this message might have been given 2,700 years ago, but it's so timely for our day and time. War rages in our world today. Terrorism continues to escalate. Many people are losing their lives by the thousands to terrorist attacks and to natural disasters again. Uh, there was an earthquake here in America that brought great destruction. There's pestilence, there's disease, there's just all this, there's this terrible tsunami of sin that is ever rising in our world today. The old convictions and standards we once held to are being swept away right before our eyes. The winds of change are blowing all around us. Fearful things are on the horizon. And today, just as in Isaiah's day, we need watchmen. We need men and women who will assume the role of watchmen, take a stand, look and see what's going on in the world today, and sound the warning. I'd like to take this passage and especially look at that question we're going to see in verse 11. Because we are living in dangerous times. Satan and the enemies of God are destroying this nation, destroying many homes and many churches. We're going to avoid that. We're going to have to take heed to this passage tonight. So if you'll stand with me, we're going to read from chapter 21, beginning with verse 6. It says, For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go set a watchman, let him declare what he sees. And he saw a chariot with a couple of horsemen, a chariot of asses and a chariot of camels. And he hearkened diligently with much heed. And he cried, A lion, my Lord, I stand continually upon the watchtower in the daytime. And I am set in my ward whole nights, all night long. And behold, here cometh the chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And all the graven images of her gods he hath broken into the ground. O oh, my threshing and the corn of my floor, that which I have heard of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have I declared unto you. The burden of Duma, he calleth to me out of Seir. Watchman, here's our question. Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? The watchman said, the morning comes, but also the night. If you'll inquire, inquire ye, return, come. Watchman, what of the night? You may be seated. Let me share three facts with you tonight about the analogy of the watchman. First of all, let's think about the watchman 
and his mission. There's a mission that he has from God. Now, in ancient times, many of the great cities were walled cities. And these walls really provided two forms of protection. First, there was the wall itself. That was a barrier that protected that city and its citizens from any invaders, any enemy that might come against them. They've got to get through that wall. So that wall was very important to the people is a formidable barrier think about Jericho and the great walls of Jericho when Joshua and his army came against it of course great walls like that are nothing to God amen God brought those walls down very easily but uh, for the natural enemy that was quite a barrier the second form of protection was the watchman not only the wall but the watchman that would stand on the wall. Now, the wall was uh, essential to the protection of the city, but the watchman was essential to stand on that wall to be a sentry. They would be all around in different watchtowers and different strategic parts of the wall, and it was their job to continually watch the horizon. And they were to announce if an enemy was coming against them. Usually they would have a shofar or a trumpet that they would blow. And there were different sounds that they would make. Like those of you who had been in the army, there was different sounds for reveille and retreat and so forth. Well, the people knew the sound of an invading army. And they would blow the shofar to alert the people of coming danger so that they could prepare. So the watchman was very essential to the walls that surrounded the city. Without the wall, the watchman would have not been necessary. He goes on to point out the duties of the watchman. Two things. First of all, he was to watch. Makes sense, doesn't it? A watchman should watch. He is to stand on the tower, on the wall, and he is to constantly to watch the countryside. He's always got to be alert, doesn't he? The watchman cannot sleep on duty. That's a serious crime for a sentry to fall asleep on duty. He has to be alert. He has to be constantly watching. There on his high and lofty perch, he is always watching for the glistening of armor, the sword and spear. He's watching for banners of war as they wave. He's watching for clouds of dust of marching armies. He has to be in his place. And he has to be carefully watching, always alert. Secondly, he wants to warn. He watches so that he can warn. He would give reports. They would come and ask, watchman, what of the night? Give us your report. What have you seen this day? And he's got to be ready always to to give a report to the people and let them know the conditions that surround the city. The same thought is brought out in Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1, where the prophet is told to cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. So the prophet oftentimes was likened unto a watchman. He had a duty to watch and warn the people of coming judgment. Now I want us to think about our day and time. Don't you think that we have a need for a watchman today? Don't we need men and women standing on the wall looking and warning people? We need watchmen around the church. We need watchmen around the home and the family. We need watchmen around the schoolhouse, just around our nation. We need people of discernment, people who know the Word of God, people who can recognize danger when it's coming. Amen? 
We need people who will watch and who will warn others. Sometimes the news is not good. Sometimes it's bad news that we have to share. We need to warn people of certain dangers that we see them getting involved in. The enemy comes against us. The enemy's coming against the church, folks. The church is being attacked like never before. There are people that are trying to lead us down the wrong pathway. They want to change our worship. They want to change our Bible. They want to change our hymn book. They want to change the message. We need to see that, don't we? And sound the warning. Sound the warning. The Holman family are under attack today. Children have forgotten the meaning of submission and obedience. Husbands and wives have no concept of faithfulness and fidelity. That till death do us part is a serious vow. Parents have forgotten how to discipline their children. They don't know how to apply the Board of Education to the seat of learning. My, my dad understood that very well. We're raising a generation of rebels who know nothing of honoring father and mother and respecting authority that's placed before them. We need to understand enemies are coming against the schoolhouse today. See what's happened in the last couple generations? Folks, the, the schools these kids are going to now are much different than the school I went to back in the 60s. Yeah, the 60s were a very rebellious time, but the school I grew up in, we could take a Bible school. We could read the Bible in class. We could have Bible clubs. We could have prayer to start the day. I remember our principal leading us in prayer every morning over the intercom. He would ask God to bless that day and keep us safe and protect us. Can't do that today. That's forbidden. God's been kicked out of the schoolhouse. The Bible's been kicked out. Our children are being taught that God is a myth and man has evolved. They say that it went from the goo to the zoo to you. That's hogwash. God has been marginalized. Children have been taught he does not exist. That they're just the result of evolution. There's no rules. There's no boundaries. And this generation is careening down a highway to hell. They need some watchmen who will sound the trumpet and warn them of the consequences of what's going on today. We could stay within these walls and not say anything. But folks, listen, people outside these walls are dying and going to hell. They're being deceived by this culture. And if we don't get out there and share the gospel message and warn them of judgment to come, who is? Who's going to do that? They cry. Brother Matt and I, we've been fairly successful lately in winning some folks to the Lord. And I tell you what I'm seeing, I, I think because of the upheaval of this day and time, and, and, and even lost people can see that things are just not right. And I think they're searching for answers. I, I'm finding people these days that are willing to listen. I've not had the door shut in my face in quite a while. People are willing to listen. They want to hear some answers. We've got the answers. You've got neighbors, I think, that will listen. You've got co-workers that will listen. You've got classmates that will listen. We need to tell them. We need to share with them the good news of Jesus Christ. We need watchmen today. First, secondly, let's think about the watchman and his methods. Now, he said his job is to watch and warn, right? 
Well, first of all, he is to be vigilant in his watching. He is to hearken diligently with much heed to what he saw. He's to take great care in watching and great care in noting what's going on around him. He's compared to a lion. Now, I read somewhere that lions have very short eyelids. And while they're sleeping, they have the appearance that their eyes are open and they're watching you. thought that was significant. We've got to always be watching. We can't be sleeping in this day and time. We've got to be in our place both day and night. We cannot leave that post, but remain there to make sure that nothing gets past us. Nothing comes in that will destroy that which we care for. Look at what the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8. Talking about our enemy today. Peter says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That word vigilant just means be watchful. Be watchful. We need the Lord's watchman to be on the post. Don't get caught up in the things of this world. Don't get so caught up in worldly matters that you forget your main purpose to be here. You're here as God's watchman. When we see trouble, we need to sound the warning. We need to be vigilant. Hey, don't you believe the world is changing all around us and it's changing fast without giving the devil any glory I've got to admit he's a pretty slick adversary amen he's very deceitful he'll deceive you he'll trick you he'll trap you Bible says neither give place to the devil all you got to do is open the door just a crack and he'll stick his foot in there won't he He'll force it. I said today that Jesus won't force his way in, but the devil will. I just thought of that. I'm going to write that down. I have original thoughts at least once a week. But seriously, Jesus will not force his way in. He waits for you to open the door and invite him in. But the old devil, if you give him an inch, he'll kick the door down. He's very aggressive, isn't he? And he'll, he seeks to do his worst, against, especially against the people of God. He wants to get a foothold into this church. I'm sure he, he's not happy with 20 people getting saved in the last couple of months. I don't think he's happy with that, do you? I think we, we might have gotten his attention. You know what he's going to do? He's going to start looking for some way to cause trouble. He's going to try to disrupt what's going on in this church. He's going to be looking for some disgruntled member, somebody that he can use to stir things up and cause problems. Hey, as a watchman, we've got to be alert and never let him do that. Never let him use you to cause problems. Not only in the church, but in your home, in your marriage. He's always looking. See if he can cause destruction in your life. He's your adversary. He's your enemy. He's after our young people. Brother Matt, he'd love to get a hold of your youth group and tear it up. I'm kind of proud the way the youth group has been responding. Brother Matt's got a new idea that I think is a great idea. Uh, Special shirts for those teens that will step up and just be part of an elite force in our youth group. I think that's a great idea. It'll motivate our young people to not just want to be average, but to step up and be a champion for Christ. And I'm proud to see some of these young people are responding to this. And I'm looking for a lot more to follow their lead. But we need to pray for them and encourage them every, every chance we get. The devil's after these young people. We need to rescue them from his grasp then secondly he was vigorous in his warning 
vigilant and vigorous. When he saw trouble coming, he could not keep that to himself. He had to shout the warning. He had to blow the trumpet. He had to let everybody know to get ready to face the coming invader. And there's a great lesson here for us. As we see the enemy destroying our country and our homes and our churches, does that not motivate us? Does that not challenge us to sound a warning? It ought to. Now some of you, maybe all preacher, what's the use? I mean, really, what's the use? What can we do? No one's going to listen to us. Somebody will. Somebody will. We can save. I think it Brother Matt gave that illustration about throwing the starfish back. I made a difference with that one. I like that. We can make a difference with that one. Lead that soul to Christ. Bring that soul back into church. We can make a difference with some. I think it's worth the effort, don't you? One of these days, we're going to face the Lord. We're going to have to give an account how well we raise the alarm in our time. Go to Ezekiel 33. Not only was the Isaiah used in this analogy, but God also used this with Ezekiel, another prophet. Ezekiel chapter 33 Let's read the first nine verses. I want to point something out here that should be of grave concern to us today. Chapter 33, verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, this is to Ezekiel, said, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he sees the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then what, whosoever hears the sound of the trumpet and takes not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned. If the sword come and take any person from among them, it is taken away in his iniquity. But it, now look at this. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I've set thee a watchman to the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Now you've heard that expression, blood on the hand. That's what he's saying. He's saying, Ezekiel, if you fail to warn these people of judgment that's to come, and they are consumed in the judgment, if you fail to warn them, their blood will be upon you. Now, how do you think that applies today? Do we have a responsibility to warn people of judgment to come? But there's coming a judgment day when your neighbors and your co-workers and your family will stand before God. And if you fail to warn them, they're still going to die in their iniquity. But God says, when you stand before me, you're going to be held responsible for this. Their blood shall be upon you. That sounds pretty serious, doesn't it? I think, I think that ought to motivate us. If just love for their souls won't motivate us, then for the sake of our own skin, it ought to motivate us to talk to that lost neighbor, that lost co-worker, that lost relative. Is there any blood on your hands? Are you going to be responsible for your neighbors? 
If they die and go to hell and you did not warn them? We need to take heed to these things and warn people and share the gospel with them. Here's the third thought. I want to think about the watchman and his message. The watchman and his message. Going back to Isaiah 21. Isaiah declares a prophecy against the people of Edom. They're pictured as someone who approaches the wall. And they yell up to the watchman during the night. They say, watchman, what of the night? Now, as I studied that, there, that can be interpreted several ways. First of all, it could be the question of a careless heart. Maybe ask in sarcasm and really not interested in what the watchman is doing. And we, we meet people like that. They're very sarcastic, and they mock what we believe and what we stand in. They mock the second coming of Christ and make jokes about it. It may be a question of a contentious heart, asking unbelief and in contempt of the watchman and what he stands for. But it may come from a concerned heart. Or maybe some is saying, they may come to you and me and, and really want to know what's coming. Things look very dark. Th things look very troublesome in the world today. I know you're a Christian. What can you tell me? What, what does this mean to you? What's coming? Watchmen? What of the night? What's this going to bring? And as I said, I'm meeting people like that. They're sincerely wanting to know. They don't know the Bible, but they know this world is spinning out of control. They know things are getting worse and worse all the time. They may wonder, is everything going to be all right? What should we do? And what a great opportunity to share the gospel. There's a threefold answer from the watchman. First, he speaks of the dawn. He says, the morning comes. The night is nearly spent. The dawn is about to break. Now, nighttime is the most frightening time of all, especially back in ancient times, that in the dark, the enemy may sneak up on the wall. They didn't have what we have today. But hey, are, are we not living in very dark times? People are coming to us in this present darkness and they're saying, is everything going to be all right? What can you tell us? What does the Bible say? What's coming? They don't, really, they don't really understand what the end times is all about. Most people I've talked to that don't know the Bible, they think of the last days as just the world exploding. Everything's just going to be destroyed and man's going to cease to exist. That's what they think. But what an opportunity to share with them the Bible. Yes, it's dark, but the sun's coming up. The dawn is coming. It's coming in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they need to know that, don't they? The coming dawn always brought comfort back then. And I'm glad to tell you tonight that the dawn is about to break. The Lord is about to come and set up his kingdom. So children of God, hang on. Hang on. It's not hopeless. What a blessed hope knowing that Christ will soon come. And he will establish a kingdom of great peace and great prosperity. Yeah, it speaks of the dawn. But secondly, speaks of the doom. He tells them after the morning passes, night will come again. Now for the people of God, there's a bright, happy morning coming for us when Christ comes. But for the lost sinner, it's a different story. Christ coming only means an eternal darkness of separation from God in hell. A continual night. It speaks of doom for those who are lost. 
There's nothing the lost man has to look forward to, friends, but the wrath of God. They say, now, preacher, in these modern times, you're not supposed to talk about hell. That upsets people. You know what I know? A lot of people, a lot more people got saved back in the old days when preachers preached on hell. A lot more people got saved back then. My mom and dad got saved because of hellfire and brimstone preaching. Their brothers and sisters got saved. My dad and five uncles got saved and entered the ministry. And they became hellfire and brimstone preachers. I don't think we need to stop preaching. I think we need to start preaching it more. People need to be warned that there is a hell to shun. Hey, Jesus warned them of hell. Do you know Jesus spoke more often of hell than he did of heaven? Yes, he said, I go to my father's house, prepare a place for you. And he spoke of heaven, but he spoke more about hell, warning people to avoid that place. I think we need to do that today. We need to ask them. We, Matt and I were talking to a gentleman the other day who was skeptical about the Bible and about uh, the gospel message. We just ask him, you know, what if the Bible's true? What if this book is actually the Word of God and there's a lot of evidence to back it up? And we shared it with him. There's a lot of evidence that backs this up. Prophecy, especially. We said, mister, if this Bible is correct, and we believe it is, you're going to die without hope, without Christ, and be cast into hell. All preachers, you shouldn't tell people that. They need to hear it. They need to know. I think the Holy Spirit will use that to convict their hearts. They need to be warned. Folks, this is the trumpet we need to blow today. We need to sound it out. It doesn't need to be an unclear message either. Amen? People don't seem to care if they go to heaven or not, but they don't want to go to hell. I think a lot of them would be content to just die and cease to exist. But we need to ask them, if the Bible's true and hell is true, what's going to happen to you? It's at least worth your trouble to look into it. Instead of just rejecting it all pan, why don't you take a little time and investigate this book? And then finally he speaks of the decision going to look at my watch but my watch quit on me so I'll just go by feeling I can't see that I got too much light in my eyes so if y'all get through hearing before I get through speaking just go ahead and leave I won't even know you're gone he speaks of the decision the watchman tells those that hear him to inquire return and come he's calling the wayward ones back to God Hey, there's still time to make a change. There's still time to return to the Lord. And that message needs to be trumpeted in our day and time. Great danger looms, but it's not too late. God is still saving souls. God is still changing lives. He is still receiving all who will come to him by faith in Jesus Christ, his son. That's the message we need to share. They need to hear the good news. They need to know that there's still hope. All's not lost. So let me ask you tonight. Have you been a faithful watchman? Standing on the wall? Warning others of the judgment that's coming? Are you doing everything you can to comfort those who are looking for hope? Warning those who are heading to hell? Maybe you're not saved... Maybe you're on the outside yourself. Maybe you need to come in. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Find refuge in Jesus Christ. Those cities of refuge in the Old Testament were types of Christ. He is where we go to find peace and find protection and refuge. Do you need to be saved tonight? Get inside the walls of salvation before the end comes. Did you come tonight to inquire, watchman? 
What is the name? Watchman, what can you tell us about what's going on around the world today? Is there any hope? What's God about to do? This blackness of darkness that we're in today, the morning is going to come. Christ is coming. A morning for the redeemed. But blackness of night for those who reject Christ. Hey, is the Spirit speaking to your heart today? Listen. Listen to that still small voice and heed his warning. Obey the Word of God tonight.